Uh, my name is Roland Daradi. I'm a senior cloud architect on Azure at Deutsche Telekom, and I'm here to talk about CIS benchmark policies using Azure Blueprints. So CIS benchmarks. CIS benchmarks are the best practices for secure configuration of a target system. Those are documentations created by the Center of Internet Security. There are over 140 benchmarks for multiple technology, technology groups. These were not created by one person. These were created on a consensus base, which means that multiple persons came up together and they have created these recommendations. Those are publicly available in PDF format for free. So you can download it. You just have to register with your email, email address. Let's take a look at an example that I have brought today. So the example is that you have on Azure some resource groups, subscriptions, and, and along you have running uh, virtual machines, and you want to secure them in a way by using policies, because some users are using the, those resources, and you want to somehow secure it, but you don't know how. So you just have to go to the CIS benchmark website to download the Azure CIS benchmark policies, and you can see what those recommendations are. It's really in an easily understandable format. The description is the description tells you the recommendation. The rationale tells you why to, why why is it good to to set up those policies. The impact tells you what happens when you set up those configurations. The audit tells you how can you check if those configurations are configured or not. The remediation tells you how to configure these and the references are there just to, to check other reading materials. Let me show you an example here. So this is a pretty basic example. It says ensure that multi-factor authentication status is enabled for all non-privileged users. It's a manual step. So it, it does and recommends us to, to, to enable multi-factor authentication for no privileged users. That's pretty straightforward, but let's see. The description tells us enable multi-factor authentication for all non-privileged users. So it's basically what, what the title is. It's sometimes uh, different, but, but it, it's just a description. You can read the rationale there. Why do you want to? enable these and there is also the impact which tells us what will happen if you enable these configurations the next one is audit is you can see that there are steps to check whether the configurations are enabled or not there are manual steps and there are also automatic steps so you can call a rest api to check if those are enabled or not this differs by recommendation. The next one is, you can see, is still about the multi-factor authentication, is about the remediation. Rem remediation it actually tells us how to set those. Of course, there are some links there because the, the CIS Azure benchmark is over 500 pages, so you will find some links and some other URLs uh, that can help you enable these configurations. Okay, so now that we know what benchmarks are, we should jump into Azure policies. And after Azure policies, I'm going to talk about Azure blueprints. And after we know uh, all of these three, what they are, then I'm going to tell you how they, all, how they could be all connected together. So Azure policy is a free Azure service that allows you to create policies and assign them to resources. It's it comes with your subscription, so it's free to use. And now we are going to, to connect these um, with Azure Blueprints. So once you set up policies manually on Azure, you can set uh, alerts or, or you can, for, for the alerts you have received, you can take actions in cases of non-compliance, which means that if you manually created um, a policy to check if multi-factor authentication is enabled on your subscription or not, if it's not enabled, then you can set up an alert for you to check that it's, it's not enabled and 
for the users are using that subscription, some some of them have not set up multi-factor authentication. So you will receive an alert for that. This way, you can enforce different rules and effects over your resources, keeping them compliant with your corporate standards and service level agreements. On this example, you can see that there are three policies. You can collect all of these three or multiple policies into a, a subset, which is called initi initiative. And you can assign the initi in initiative to the Azure resource groups or subscriptions. And we are going to take a look at how it's done using code. But first, we need to know about Azure Blueprints. Azure Blueprints is another Azure service that assists with environment setup. You, you, you can set up resource groups, role assignments, different policies. We are going to check those policies and role assignments, resource manager deployment templates. So essentially, Blueprints are packages that put all of these types of resources together, and it helps us with automation and deployment. We are going to check how they all connect together. So on this on this slide, you can see on the left side that is CIS Azure Foundation benchmark. We are going to create a, multiple JSON files for, for the policies that we want to deploy to Azure. We are going to use Azure DevOps for that, for the deployment pipeline, as the deployment pipeline. And we are going to use either Azure Bicep or Terraform or any other infrastructure as well as software to deploy those to Azure Blueprints. And now, after we have deployed those to Azure Blueprints, the Azure Blueprints will assign those set of policies to your subscription or resource group by using Azure Policy. This is what Azure Blueprints look like, basically. So it's a set of definitions, policy definitions, could be RM templates, role-based access controls. You collect all of these and create a, a so-called blueprint out of, out of this, and you can assign these to any of your subscriptions. So you don't have to manually configure any of these over and over again for 100 subscriptions that you have in your environment. We can ensure compliance with Empower DevOps, and we can just make our lives easier with this. We can deploy cloud resources with this, and it's highly reusable, of course. This example shows us we have, on the upside, we have the tenant root group, root group. We have multiple management groups and in those management groups you can find multiple subscriptions and under the subscriptions you can find multiple resource groups as well so if you want to apply any policy on a higher level you can put those subscriptions in a management group and then assign the, the policies on the management group and it will enforce all of those policies on a lower level as well so on your subscription and on your resource group as well yeah, the key icons are subscriptions and the box icons are resource groups. And the good thing with Azure Blueprints is that whenever you, you configure a policy, you can, you can set those to read-only status, which means that not even an, uh, an owner can remove those policies from the subscription because Azure Blueprints as, a, as an Azure service is the only one who can who can who can remove those and activate those policies as well? And we are going in in, in the next demo uh, that I brought to you. We are going to see how we can store these as code, these policies, and how can we deploy them. So take a look at this video. A blueprint parameter definition that is called blueprint.json. You can store the, the properties of every single blueprint policy that you want to assign later on. But this in itself is not enough because these are just parameter values. These are not the exact policies that we want to assign to a specific Azure resource. In order to do so, we need to set up the policies as artifacts. So 
I have put every single policy as a JSON file under the artifacts folder. So we can, you know, separate these and delete some of them later on if we don't want to use those. Let's check one. So it's in a JSON format. This is the blueprint definition in itself. So this is going to be deployed by using Azure DevOps. Okay, so let's jump to Azure DevOps and trigger the pipeline. This pipeline is going to deploy the blueprint to Azure. And while this runs, I will show you that on Azure, under the blueprints, we can see there are no blueprints found yet. So the pipeline is going to deploy it. So now that the pipeline has finished, let's check the blueprints, refresh the page, and we can see that uh, actually the blueprint has been deployed. So we can see multiple policy assignments that has been deployed. But essentially this in itself is not working yet because those are just definitions as blueprint. But we can see these now here, so that's a great start. But we need to assign them to a resource on Azure. We can do this automatically by using REST API, but I'm going to just go ahead and assign it manually. Let's select this subscription here. The assignment name is going to be the same. I'm going to change this to West Europe. And here is the lock assignment, which is really important because if we click this and set it to read only, it means that the assignment is locked and the deployed resources cannot be modified or deleted, even by the subscription owners. Azure Blueprints, as a, an Azure service, is the only one who can revoke these policy assignments. These are the parameters that we stored in the Blueprints JSON file. I am not going to modify these and I'm just going to press assign. What happens now is that it assigns the policies to the subscription. And if we go back to blueprints, we can check the assigned blueprints here. We can already see one assignment and the provisioning state of it is waiting. So if I click on this one, we can see it is waiting. Now we just have to wait for the assignment to complete. The next phase is locking. So it locks every single policy that has been assigned to that particular resource, which means that no one, not even a super admin, can disable these policies. The assignment has succeeded. Now let's check the policies on the resource. We are in the target resource and now we can check the assignments under the policy tab. Nearly 200 policies has been assigned to the resource. And these are those exact policies that we have defined as code and deployed through Azure DevOps. Okay, so thanks guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot about CI's platform. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>